Hey, this is Nicholas. As you can tell by my hair, we're still in lockdown. So let's go ahead and do another Star Wars case study. This time, we're gonna look at Senator Amidala, a 27-year-old female who's experiencing some, we could say, emotional distress. You're wrong. How could you even say that? <laughs> You're going down a path I can't follow. Breaking my heart. Eventually, the condition becomes so severe that she actually dies of sadness. Or maybe... Darth Sidious was using Sith alchemy to drain Padme's life force and transfer it into Vader. And that's how Vader was able to survive Mustafar. Anyway, in terms of Chinese medicine, I think we can say that this condition fits with the TCM disease diagnosis Zhang Zhao, which can be translated as restless organ disorder, or, if you're Nigel Weissman, visceral agitation. Now, as much as I like to poke fun at Weissman terminology, it turns out he does have a very good description of this disease in his Practical Dictionary of Chinese Medicine. Here, he describes visceral agitation as a paroxysmal mental disease most prevalent in women, heralded by melancholy and depression, illusions, emotionalism, and increased or diminished sensitivity. Now, I'm not sure if this is a very nice word to use anymore, but this is basically describing hysteria. So this is an emotional disorder that often has an emotional cause. Anxiety damages the heart shen. Excessive thinking, worry, and taxation damage the spleen. And again, in the words of Nigel Weissman, when the heart is deprived of nourishment, the heart spirit fails to be stored, and spirit chi runs amok. And this definitely applies to Senator Amidala. She's already experienced a lot of stress, worry, and just physical taxation dealing with the ongoing Clone War. She's experiencing anxiety about the future and how she's going to manage having a family. And then, to top it all off, she discovers that her husband is a Sith Lord who just murdered a temple full of younglings. But this disorder can have physical causes as well. Basically, this pattern has a component of chi and blood deficiency. So especially if there's recent or recurring blood loss, such as heavy menses or giving birth, that can be a contributing factor. So that's why Weissman says that this condition is more prevalent in women. Women are more yin in nature and more likely to experience blood deficiency, whereas men are more yang in nature, so they might be more likely to experience anger and liver yang rising. But anyway, this disorder, Zhang Zhao, was originally mentioned in the Jingwei Yalue under the heading Miscellaneous Disorders of Women. However, like Bensky says, even though this is discussed as a women's disease, it's equally applicable to men and children as well. So I guess the point of all that discussion was, postpartum depression, or even depression during pregnancy, is often considered restless organ disorder. Now obviously, Senator Amidala is not postpartum, but we could still say that pregnancy or gestation also draws on the body's reserves of chi and blood, and that can be contributing to the pattern we see here. So how do we treat this? Well, the herbal formula for this condition, as mentioned in the Jingwe Yalue, is Ganmai Datsao Tong. This formula has three ingredients, all of which are mentioned in the name. Gan means Gansao, Mai means Fu Xiao Mai, and Datsao means Datsao. So Gansao and Datsao are both in the category herbs that tonify qi. Now, if you remember, most of the herbs in this category enter the lung and or spleen channel, since those are the two sources of postnatal qi. But Gansao stands out here because it's one of the few herbs in this category that also enters the heart channel as well. So Gansao tonifies heart qi. Datsao, even though we don't say it enters the heart channel, it still has an action of tonifying blood to calm shen. So both of these herbs nourish the heart and calm the shen, which is what we want. And they also both have an action of tonifying spleen qi, which is also useful because by tonifying the spleen, that will help with the underlying qi and blood deficiency. And we also said that this condition often starts with worry and overthinking, which can damage the spleen. Fu Xiao Mai is in the stabilize and bind category because it stops sweating. But it's included here because, like the other two, it nourishes the heart. So we have a simple combination of three herbs that nourish the heart and calm the shen. So this is a relatively simple formula. In fact, it's sometimes called kitchen medicine. 
Gan Zhao is licorice root, Fu Xiao Mai is floating wheat, and Da Zhao is Chinese date. So these are all common ingredients that a Chinese person might have lying around in their kitchen. And this is a relatively mild formula. Since all the ingredients are kind of like food, it's pretty safe for most people, as long as you're not gluten intolerant. Some people even nickname it happy tea, since it's good for melancholy, depression, and uncontrollable bouts of crying. And unlike a lot of Chinese herbal formulas, this one actually tastes good. So I would say if you're making this, make sure you use the regular gansao, not the honey fried jir gansao, and maybe use the red Chinese date, hongzao, not the black date, heidatzao. Now there are some actual reasons for this, like these herbs have more of a cooling effect, and that's what we're going for in this formula, but also it just tastes better. I once made this formula with jirgan sao and had a smoky burnt taste, so it will just taste a lot better if you use regular gan sao. Then if we wanted to kick it up a notch, it's very common to modify this formula. So if we were seeing more heat and irritability, we could add sheng di huang and bai he, since these both clear heat and tonify yin. If we wanted it to be more nourishing, we could add swan zao ren and bite zao ren, since these are from the category nourish heart to calm shen. Or if we wanted it to be more anchoring, we could add long gu and mu li, since these are both heavy medicinals from the category anchor, settle, and calm the shen. So that was herbal theory, but what about acupuncture? Well, let's take a step back and make sure we're clear on what it is we're trying to do. Because when you say the diagnosis is zang zao, that's a disease diagnosis, which is very different from a pattern diagnosis. So let's make sure we understand the pattern of disharmony, which will then help us decide what our treatment should look like. So I think the pattern that best fits our situation is one that Machiochi calls worry injuring the mind. Now when you say worry, we're talking about the emotion of worry, nodding the chi and injuring the spleen. And when we say the mind, we're talking about the heart shen. Since the heart is being deprived of nourishment, it's no longer able to properly house the spirit. But worry injuring the mind might sound a little vague for a Zong Fu diagnosis. So maybe we can get a little bit more specific and say that there's heart deficiency, both qi and blood, possibly with some underlying spleen deficiency. So our treatment principle would be to nourish the heart and calm the shen, and then maybe do some stuff to support the spleen as well. So one possibility would be to use this popular combination heart seven, lung nine, and pericardium six, which some people call Buddha's triangle. Now I'll be honest, I normally don't like this combination. I think it's way overused, but in this situation, I think it's actually perfect for what we're trying to do. Heart seven is the yuan source point of the heart channel, so it tonifies the heart and calms the shen. Lung nine is the yuan source point of the lung, so it's tonifying qi and also helping with sadness and grief. Pericardium six is a lul connecting point. And remember, we said that one of the functions of the lul connecting points is that they treat mental emotional disorders. So pericardium six unbinds the chest, regulates the heart, and calms the shen. And if we wanted to go deeper, we could look at the names of these points. Heart seven is shen men, or spirit gate. So obviously it has something to do with calming the spirit since it has the word spirit right in the name. Lung nine is Taiyuan, supreme abyss. So this is a point for someone who feels like they're in a great abyss, someone in the depths of despair or depression. So this point can reach into those great depths and pull them out. Pericardium six is Nei Guan, inner gate or inner pass. So this can be used when there's a discrepancy between the internal and the external. If this gate is stuck closed, then the person keeps everything out and they become trapped in their own prison of despair. Or if the gate is stuck open, then everything gets let in, even the negativity, where it can easily attack the heart. So all of these points have a strong emotional effect. So for just like insomnia, I wouldn't necessarily choose all three of these points, but because there's a lot of anxiety, shen disturbance, and an element of sadness and grief, I think this is actually a great combination for this situation. So another point that comes to mind, at least for me, is spleen six. The name of spleen six is san yin jiao, three yin intersection, referring to the fact that it's a crossing point on the spleen, liver, and kidney channels. So this is a great point for tonifying the spleen and tonifying qi and blood. But what a lot of people forget is that the spleen channel also has an internal pathway that connects to the heart. So spleen six also has an action of calming the shen, especially when it's due to an underlying deficiency. 
The problem is, spleen 6 is contraindicated during pregnancy, so we probably shouldn't use that here. But it might be helpful to go to other tonifying points like REN6 and stomach 36. So these points can tonify chi and blood, which will in turn nourish the heart, which is what we want. Some other possibilities, we could use lung 3. Lung 3 is a window of heaven point, and window of heaven points also have a strong mental emotional effect. And this would be especially useful here because there's an element of sadness and grief, so that's why we're choosing a window of heaven point on the lung channel. And we could use points like do 20 or do 26 to lift the spirit and calm the shin. Now this combination is listed in the Great Compendium of Acupuncture and Moxibustion for excessive crying. Or we could use other shen calming points instead, like yin tang or ear shen men. So those are just a few possibilities, but let me know what you think. What points would you use in this situation, or what points would you add? Do you think we should throw in some kidney points to help strengthen the will? Or should we use some liver points to nourish blood and settle the hun, the ethereal soul? Let me know in the comments below. But that's it for today. If we haven't met, my name is Nicholas. I'm a grown man who owns a stuffed porg. And on this channel, I make videos for students of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. Videos that will hopefully help you better understand the material so that you can pass your test, because passing tests is important, but then also help you understand the material so that you can heal your patients. Because ultimately, that's what we're trying to do when we study this medicine. So if that's something you want to see more of, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you like this combination of TCM and Star Wars, I have an Instagram page that's basically Chinese medicine memes, and a lot of them use Star Wars. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But I hope you enjoyed this one because that's all for today. Thanks and see you next time.